Hello, this is for ISOL 633 at the University of the Cumberlands. This is for the textbook Legal Issues in Information Security. And this is Chapter 10, Intellectual Property Law. Intellectual property is the area of law that protects a person's creative ideas, inventions, and innovations protects people's ownership rights in their creative ideas, gives you the right to control the use of your creative ideas, protects your ability to protect from other from your ideas, and also prevents other people from exploiting your creative ideas. Intellectual property protection in the United States has a long history. The US Constitution recognizes the importance of protecting intellectual property. This chapter reviews the major ways you can protect intellectual property and also reviews the role of information technology in intellectual property issues. So the learning objective for this chapter is to analyze intellectual property laws. The topics we will cover include why intellectual property law is important, what the concept of legal ownership is, what the basics of patent protection are, what the basics of trademark protection are, what the basics of copyright protection are, and what the basics of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act are. Key concepts we will cover include the importance of protecting intellectual property, legal ownership and its protection. We'll also look at patents, trademarks, and copyright. Intellectual property. Legal owner of property has the right to use it in any way he or she wants to, and the power to give those rights to another. This is a property interest. It means that the owner has certain rights to property and and a court will enforce those rights if necessary. There are a number of different types of property ownership. A person can have real property interest. This means that he or she owns land. A person also can have a personal property interest. This means that he or she owns physical possessions. Physical possessions are items like cars, books, and silverware. Owners of property have the ability to control how it's used. Ownership is an important concept for intellectual property. An IP or intellectual property owner has certain exclusive rights. The owner is the person who created new works or inventions. That person is the only one who has these rights. First, to enforce these rights, the court can punish people who violate these rights. The exclusive right to control how creations and inventions are used is the main purpose of intellectual property law. Creators have a right to control how their creations are used for a certain period of time depending upon the underlying nature of the creation. Different laws protect inventions and literary works for different periods. Patents. A patent is an intellectual property right. It's granted by the federal government. Congress enacted the most recent version of U.S. patent law and Patent Act of 1952. Congress has amended this law several times. Most recent amendment to U.S. patent law was in 2011. In the 2011 Lay Smith American Inventions Act introduced significant changes to U.S. patent law. U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, or USPTO, grants patents. The USPTO is an agency located in the Department of Commerce. Patents are granted to ensure to encourage new and useful inventions. Patent owners have the right to keep others from making or using the patent, pan, patented invention. They also have the power to stop others from selling their invention. Inventions or discoveries must be patentable in order to be protected. They must meet certain requirements. 
An inventor must meet all of these requirements in the patent application. And those include that the invention or discovery must be novel, must be useful, and must not have been something that was obvious. Trade secrets. Patents are intellectual property rights that are granted under federal law. They grant exclusive rights to an inventor of an item for a certain period of time. The patent owner has the right to keep others from making or using patented invention. He or she also has the power to stop others from selling their invention. Trade secrets are similar. Trade secrets protect formulas, processes, methods, and information that give a business a competitive edge. Trade secrets must have value to a person or business. Otherwise, there's no reason to protect it. Trade secret is a common law concept. It's been codified under federal law and by many states. To establish a trade secret, the information that's to be protected must have value. Information must have economic value, which means that it's value to the business that protects it. It also means that it would be valuable to competitors of the business. Also takes into account the money, time, and resources that the business put into developing the information. The more valuable the information, the more likely that it's a trade secret. Be unknown. The information must not be known outside of the business. If other companies or people know about the information, then it's not a secret. Any public awareness of the information can end its protected status. Must also be unascertainable. The information must not be easy to duplicate or even reverse engineer. If low effort is needed to ascertain the information, then it's unlikely to be considered a trade secret. And be protected. The information must be protected. This means that the business must take steps to make sure that it doesn't become accessible or known to the public. To protect the information, the business should use confidentiality and non-disclosure contracts when they share the information with others. The more the business protects the information, the more likely it's a trade secret. Because they're kept secret, trade secrets can be protected for an unlimited period of time. In order to enforce the trade secrets, the person or business must take actions that protect them and keep them secret. A recent Alabama Court of Appeals case dealt with the protection of trade secrets. In that case, documents that contained trade secrets information were left in an unmarked box on the back seat of a company vehicle. Keys to the vehicle were not safeguarded. Many company employees potentially had access to the vehicle. In determining that the company didn't take proper steps to protect its trade secret, the Alabama Court of Appeals said, we aren't convinced that, the, that leaving allegedly confidential and sensitive documents in a cardboard box in a company vehicle for over one week amounts to a reasonable step to ensure the secrecy of the information contained therein. So the trade secret categories include sales methods, distribution methods, consumer profiles, advertising strategies, lists of suppliers and clients, and also manufacturing processes. Trademarks and service marks. Trademark is an intellectual property right. It's used to protect words, logos, and symbols that identify a product or service. Businesses spend a lot of money developing their trademarks. A trademark is used to distinguish between different products. Mark used to identify services is called a service mark. Laws for trademarks and service marks are the same. Trademarks and service marks are collectively called trademarks in many texts, including this one. Even the U.S. Patent 
and trademark office uses the term trademark to describe both types of marks. So trademark protection rights belong to the first person who uses the trademark in commerce. This is different from patent and copyright laws, which award rights to the inventor or author. First person or business to use a trademark in, commerce, in commerce will have certain common law rights to use the trademark. This is true under common law and state and federal trademark statutes. Entities that use trademarks in U.S. interstate commerce often register them with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Entities that use trademarks only in one state may choose to register only in that particular state. Copyright. A copyright is an intellectual property right. The U.S. Constitution establishes a federal copyright protection. The first federal, first federal copyright law was established in 1790. The most recent version of federal copyright law is the 1976 Copyright Act. Copyright is protected under federal law. States are preempted from creating their own copyright laws. The holder of a copyright has the exclusive right to do anything with a copyrighted work. The holder is the only one who can reproduce, perform, or sell the work. Copyright holders also have the power to keep others from using their copyrighted material. Almost anything can be copyrighted. In the digital realm, it's important for you to remember that most materials posted to the internet are protected by copyright. Most informational and advertising materials posted on websites for businesses and organizations are subject to copyright. Blog posts and personal websites also are protected. When posting information that you find on the internet, you need to make sure that you don't violate the owner's copyright. Copyright owners also have the power to keep others from using their copyrighted material. It's important to understand who the owner of a copyright is. Often the owner of a copyright is the person who created the original work. This isn't always the case, however. For example, when an employee creates a work for his or her employer, the employer typically is the owner of the copyright. Copyright law calls the situation a work made for hire. The length of copyright protection is determined through ownership. For original works created after January 1st, 1978, a copyright lasts for the length of the author's life plus 70 years after the author's death. If two or more authors prepare a work, the 70 year period doesn't begin to run out until after the last author's death. For the work made for hire, a copyright lasts for 95 years from the publication of the work. Protection also could be extended for 120 years for creation of the work. Whichever period is shorter is the proper term. Copyright holders have exclusive rights in the work that they create. These rights arise from the work is created and continue for the length of the copyright. The federal government doesn't enforce copyrights. Authors must enforce their own rights. They can sue people to infringe on their copyright. Liability for infringement is based upon strict liability. A copyright owner can hold an infringer liable for violating the copyright even if the infringement was unwitting. Fair use. A copyright holder has a large number of rights in his or her original work. The scope of these rights is to encourage artistic expression. However, there are some limitations on a copyright holder's exclusive rights. These limitations are a defense to copyright infringement. Fair use is one of the most common limitations. The law states that fair use of copyrighted work isn't copyright infringement. 
will all list a number of examples of fair use. Fair use is permitted in these situations in order to protect free speech. Examples include criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching included copies for classroom use, scholarship, and research. So deter determining fair use. The law also lists a number of factors that can be determined used to determine whether a use can be considered fair use. These factors are technology neutral. They can also use to analyze the use of any type of creative work. The factors are the purpose and character of the use, the use for nonprofit, educational, or comment purposes tends to favor fair use. Use as for commercial or profit purposes tends to weigh against fair use. The nature of the copyrighted work. The, creative, the more creative work is, the more protected it will be afforded. Fair use tends to favor the use of facts and not the creative expression of an idea. The amount and substantiality of the work used. Use of small amount of the copyrighted work tends to favor fair use. However, use of small part of a work that encompasses the substantial idea in the work weighs against fair use. And the effect of the use upon the potential market. Use that has no effect on potential market for work tends to be way in favor of fair use. The use of a work that has a major effect on the market is less likely to be considered fair use. The court weighs these factors against one another to determine whether use of copyrighted work is fair use. If fair use is indicated, it may be a defense to a copyrighted infringement claim. Fair use cases are very difficult to decide. Courts must engage in a very detailed analysis to determine fair use. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA. In 1998, Congress passed the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Congress created the DMCA to help protect copyrights in the digital world. It also contains provisions to help insulate an internet service providers from actions of their customers. So the basics of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and have five titles. Title one, this title implements two World Intellectual Property Organizations treaties. It contains provisions about technical measures used to protect electronic copyright works. Title two, it's called the Online Copyright Infringement Liability Limitations Act. It limits the liability of online service providers for copyright infringement by users. Title III is called the Computer Maintenance Com Competition Assurance Act. It allows computer technicians to make a copy of computer program for maintenance or repair. Title IV contains miscellaneous provisions and Title V is called the Vessel Hull Design Protection Act. It creates a new form of intellectual property for the design of vessel hulls. Intellectual property protection is broad. It protects a person's copyright rights in their creative ideas, their ownership rights in their creative ideas gives them the right to protect their ideas and profit from them. These rights are exclusive to the owners of intellectual property. They can take action against people who violate their IP rights. Intellectual property protection is particularly important to think about as more content becomes available on the internet. Intellectual property law protects ideas once they're in the physical form. When materials are published on the web, they're in a physical form. Traditional legal concepts about intellectual property ownership are used to protect materials published on the internet. Thank you.